Hey YouTube, it's Mike with Thousand Reptiles. So I want to try to do something new, get more videos out. So I'm going to try to do like a weekly video, maybe we call it a vlog, I don't know. Um, I'm going to put it out either Fridays or Saturdays. We'll see when this first one gets put out. And then every week I'll try to put one out on that same day. Um, I'm starting outside today. Uh, my wife is here with me, so I actually have some filming. Um, and you can kind of show them the habitats. So these are our turtle habitats. These are my, um, uh, what is it, North American wood turtle, eastern box turtle, and then the far one over here is Gulf Coast box turtle. Um, I'm going to show you just a little bit here, not spend a lot of time outside, but to show you a little, and then I'll show you a little inside. Um, I'm going to try to kind of give you updates on what's going on. So come on in. So this is cool stuff right now with the pond. The uh, water lily is blooming, it's really pretty. Um, people maybe can tell me this. So this here is elderberry, which uh, my turtles don't seem to like anyhow, but um, I recently heard it's not good for turtles. Maybe people can tell me what they know about it. Uh, I'm leaving it up because the birds love it. I like to attract all wildlife out here, uh, but I'm probably gonna cut these really far back after this year, uh, just because of what I heard that it's not good for turtles, even though I actually I've never seen any of my turtles eating it. Um, if we come over here just a little bit. I do like to grow um, foods that they do eat though. So I have blackberry. Most of it's uh, been eaten for the year. But I see one, a couple down there. Um, and then I have some raspberry also. Here's some raspberries coming in. I have some blueberry. Alright. Um, I have this hibiscus which I've heard they'll eat but I've actually never seen them eat. Um, this big tree in the back is a peach tree. This is only the second year of the peach tree, so it's not really giving me peaches yet. I got two little green ones on there, but I'm hoping to eventually get uh, actual peaches on it. I want to put in, if you come back over to this, I want to put in another plant here um, in this kind of open area. Something that will uh, create food, but also some cover. If you have suggestions, leave it in the comments below. So as you can see, that is one of my big males. That's the white-faced, or the more white-faced. My other big male has a, has a little bit of white on his chin. But this guy here that you're seeing, he has the mostly white face. I love that guy, he's awesome. And then this one that I'm holding, this is a three-year-old. So he's getting some size on him. He's not nearly as big as those big ones. Uh, hopefully I can find a big one to show you. But this three-year-old uh, male is actually already bigger than most of my Eastern box turtles. So one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is, um, you see starting to get a little white chin, the Gulf Coast box turtles are much bigger than the Easterns. So uh, again, that big male down there is probably him times 1.5 or something. So and he's already bigger than my adult Easterns. All right, so here is one of my North American woods. These are yearlings. Um, this is the smaller of the two, but I moved them into the big enclosure. This one actually just a week or two ago. And they are doing great in the big enclosure. They have the pond, they have the little soaking area. They got all this food, all you can eat buffet. Uh, so again, that's the smaller of the two that are in here. Um, and again, they're doing really good. They love the pond, but we just happen to find this one hanging out right here, getting some sun. So this here is one of the two-year-old Eastern box turtles. This is actually the smaller of them. And uh, she's actually gotten huge since she's been put into the big enclosure. I put her into the big enclosure maybe a month and a half ago. And honestly, I think she's probably gained 50 grams. Um, she's so much bigger now. Again, that's the two-year-old. Now, the other of the two-year-olds is even bigger than her. And I literally, a couple days ago, came out and he was in the pond with a frog in his mouth. First time I've seen any of the turtles eating a frog. There's tons of frogs. I think I had four, maybe even five different species of frogs that are living in this area. And uh, first time I've seen a turtle with a frog, but sure enough, there's a turtle with a frog in its mouth. So this is one of the adult males. This is the smaller of the adult males. Um, he is like this darker orange. The other one's like a really bright orange. You can tell he's been in the pond. He has the duckweed all over his back. He's probably looking for a girl. He's been breeding a lot. I didn't get a lot of eggs this year. At least I didn't find a lot. Maybe I missed all the laying and they're in the enclosure somewhere. But I've just seen a lot of breeding. I just wanted a chance to show you guys one of the adult males, and again, he's a little bit of the, he's the smaller of the two adult males, but uh, he's not even as big as that three-year-old Gulf Coast. So 
So this here is one of the incubators. This is my outside incubator. Actually, it's outside just because I can't fit it inside. It's a big Pepsi machine. Um, if you see, it looks like the glass is broken, but this is actually three pane glass, and the inside pane broke, but the, sorry, the middle pane broke. The inside and the outside are both intact, so there's nothing there. See, I can't cut myself. Right now, I got four clutches out here. Um, I actually had a smaller ball python season this year. I think I'm going to end up under 20 clutches this year. I had 27 last year, but I still ended up having to use the incubator. I used the herb stats on my incubator, so I got that up there. So I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. I got the freezer for frozen rodents. All right, that's basically full right now, but you know, people wonder, you know, do you keep it with your food? No, that's all frozen rodents there. Our food is kept in our regular refrigerator. So this is the inside incubator. Um, I'll explain the cover on it. Right now, there's a couple openings because I had a couple clutches hatch. Speaking of which, wow. <laughs> I have a clutch in here that is uh, out. Um, I haven't checked it yet today, but sure enough, there's a clutch in there where the babies are out of the eggs. It's a little early, so I have to check what that is. I didn't think, I wasn't expecting any clutch for another five to eight days to even start hatching. But uh, I can fit one, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve 12 clutches in here. This was full when those ones got put outside. Obviously, there's some openings now. Um, I've used this for two, three years now. I like this thing. Um, it's working good, but unfortunately, I can only fit 12 clutches in there. Now, why I have this? Uh, I have this because I was getting direct sunlight from a window hitting the incubator, and I didn't want it to mess with the temperatures or anything, so I covered the incubator um, with this paper for that reason. That's why it's there. Um, if you follow me, you know I've had a lot of bad luck the beginning of this year with my incubation, so I was just wondering if maybe that was one of my problems. So that's why I have it covered. All right, so uh, if you were watching, you saw the incubator clip, and I had a clutch pop out. So apparently I forgot to write down on my board this clutch, so I didn't even realize it was due to hatch. And sure enough, it did hatch. You can come and zoom in on them. So it was a Het Clown female bred to an Enchi Het Clown male and a Mystic Het Clown male. And I think it's actually dual sired because this here looks like an Enchi and that would be an Enchi at 66% Pos Het Clown this here looks like a normal that would be 66% Pos Het Clown and this here I think this is a Mystic Clown uh, correct me if I'm wrong but it's not an Enchi Clown and it does not look like a normal clown been a year since a hatch clown so I could be just a normal clown but I think this is actually a mystic clown which is awesome because it's one of the things I wanted to hit on this year unfortunately two of the eggs did not uh, make it they had gone bad but this thing here is freaking awesome I'm pretty sure that's a mystic clown I said that like four times now I know I'm pretty pumped <laughs> all right it's always fun to find a clutch already hatched out didn't have to cut it or anything all right, so I'm going to end this uh, first weekly vlog, weekly update, whatever you want to call it, showing off this really cool snake and just talking a little bit about the room. So um, those of you that follow me have seen the room. It has a few changes. I still plan on putting in, I think, another Freedom Breeder 1040 rack, probably right here in the middle somewhere. And then I want to replace the smaller of my hatching racks over there with another either Freedom Breeder or ARS hatching rack. And at that point, I'm probably going to be pretty full in here. Um, we'll see. I'll always figure out ways to add more if I can. But uh, the snake that I'm showing you, I got real into Colombian rainbow boas. And I have quite a few of them and I never show them off. This here is my adult female paradigm Colombian rainbow boa. Um, I hope she gives me a litter next year. Uh, I have a male paradigm. And if you don't know what the paradigm is in Colombian rainbow boas, it is a T positive, T negative um, combo. Basically, it has one allele for T pos, one allele for T neg, and you get the paradigm. And by breeding the same male to this female, I'm hoping to hit on more paradigms, T negatives, and T positive Colombian rainbow boas. Um, and again, in future episodes, if you want, I'll show off more of the collection. I have a hypo male, I have some um, anery male and female, some blue eye leucistics. So I have some other cool Colombian rainbow boas to go in the collection. Um, and again, for those of you that follow me, I have officially sold all my hog noses. I'm out of hog noses. I was having such bad luck with them. Uh, I think because my room is just too hot for them. So I did sell those all. 
and um, I've sold a lot of my blood pythons in the hopes to open up space for more of the Colombian rainbow boas and regular boas. Um, again, if you follow me, you saw I had a couple litters this year. I'll show those off in future videos. Osmond Reptiles out.